Holy shift. <laughs> Holy shift. How many times have you said something kind of close to that? Yeah. Right? You know, if you look at those two words, what's missing? One letter. F. Oh, there's the F word. <laughs> oh my. Holy shit. But that F word to me, and we've already been talking about it right now, is the heart. That's the note for the heart chakra, for those of you who are not aware. That's a tone, actually, for the heart chakra. Just listen to that tone. It's hard to tone the bowl and hold the mic at the same time, but just allow yourself. I'm going to strike the bowl one more time. Just allow that vibration and that frequency of the heart to move into you. Just be open to it. I invite you to do that. Just breathe. There's so much going on in our lives. There's so much going on in the world. What do we do? We just breathe. Sometimes just that is more than enough. And it's really easy to forget that. So invite yourself at times to just create that experience for yourself. Your breath is always there, it never goes away. Robert Holden wrote a book, actually, uh, called Shift Happens. If you're not familiar with Robert Holden, I invite you to, to really uh, take a look at his work. But also, he wrote another book called Holy Shift, and it really is based on the Course in Miracles. But there was a quote that I pulled, and it's actually on the front of your bulletin. And it says, one new perception, one fresh thought, one act of surrender, one change of heart, one leap of faith can change your life forever. It doesn't take a lot, not much at all. I have my iPad today, I really do that. I, I love this iPad because it allows me to speak into it when thoughts are streaming through my mind when I can't write fast enough or a particular message that I want to remind myself of and needed to share with you all today. The last several weeks, uh, we've been discussing stories. Melanie has done many talks on stories. We've talked about creating new stories, letting the old stories go. And, and the question this morning is, how are you doing with that? Have you been releasing those old stories? Are you still stuck in those stories? Have you opened yourself up to writing a new one? That's something to, to give yourself you know, a moment with. What are you doing with that, if anything? Because the energy of those stories, as Melanie reminded us, and as I spoke about in my authenticity talk, the stories can really energize us and propel us forward, or they can exhaust us and drag us down. And today's talk is really about the slightest shift in our lives. Paradise. Letting things go. Allowing us to see something differently. Whatever it is that's going on, all the prayer requests this morning, in our humanness, it is really difficult at times, as we know, to see something different because we're seeing it through those human eyes. We're seeing it through the eyes, those lenses that have been colored over for so long. And, and, and stuff is accumulated. How many, how many of you wear glasses and you know what happens if you don't clean them? After a while, you're like, whoa, I can't see today. It's like, oh, yeah, my glasses. Perhaps I need to clean them, and they will offer me a new perspective. Perhaps the stories I'm still carrying with me are the filters that I'm looking through. Instead of saying, holy sh we can say, holy shift. Because to me, in that moment, I see that as a touching of the garment moment. 
I remember the first time I heard that analogy of Jesus when Jesus would walk into a space and people, all they needed to do was what? Touch the garment. But what was happening in that moment? Of instant transformation. Of instant transcendence. It was really connecting with what we already know. It was simply remembering the truth of who we are. And in that moment, that to me, folks, is a holy shift. It is a holy, sacred moment, unlike any other. I think sometimes in our humanness, we forget what we are capable of. These things have I done, and greater things than these will you do. I don't often quote the Bible, but this morning, obviously, stuff is coming out. I like that. Thank you, Catherine. And, and it was crazy, too, because when I was putting some thoughts together about this talk, it reminded me of a quote when I was in junior high school. I know some of you may remember in a couple of my talks, I, I talked about my Baptist-type upbringing and my mom being Russian Orthodox and, and all of this. And in high school and in junior high, I got very involved in a lot of the religious stuff just to fit in. And I lived very different lives. I had many faces that I wore because I could not be who I was. I could not let people see me. So I would go, and I was actually, and it was crazy to remember this, I was speaking to junior high kids, and like, I can't remember what they called them back then, not like a spiritual pep rally, but kind of, sort of, and we did it like in the morning, and I remember this one quote, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in the New Thought translation, I am the Christ. The Christ mind. The Christ energy. And it is not the little I. It is the I am that can do those things. I was like, wow, Jeannie. So today, it's really offering each of you that opportunity, that reminder, wherever you are on this journey of transformation, of, of reawakening, of remembering, whether you're dealing with a health, I won't even call it a crisis, a health journey, perhaps something in relationships, perhaps a relationship with yourself, perhaps a work scenario, perhaps all the things that we even shared this morning, no matter where you are, no matter what you are going through, when we can simply allow ourselves, just like the wind, when the wind shifts directions, what does it bring to you? Fresh air. It might bring in a fragrance. It might bring in something different in that now moment. And you're feeling what? God. You're feeling life. And it's shifting around you. Are you willing to shift? ever so slightly to allow yourself to open to a new perspective. Very powerful. There's three words that I love to remind myself of. To the degree. To the degree that I am open and willing to see things differently, the universe is like, oh great! We have an opening. We have a crack. There's a shift. But to the degree, then my life will be transformed. My life will change. I will transcend this experience and I will know in here. Not just in my mind, but I will have a knowing in the core of me that there is another experience, another expression of me that I am being called to step into, to dance with, transcend dance. Get it? The dance of transcending. To me, that's dancing with the divine. It's being partnered with the divine. And when you do that, you don't have to worry about your steps. You don't have to worry about where you're going. You just what? For those of you who have danced in, in ballroom dancing and, and those kinds of things, Catherine put her hand up. I love it. <laughs> if you have somebody who's a good lead, what is your job as a follower? You let go. And you allow them to guide you. Otherwise, you're what? All over the place. It's like that. 
But you have to be open and willing. And to the degree that you are willing to let go and surrender and allow, wow, you'll never want the dance to end. In fact, Catherine and I were dancing before service. The band was playing, say, see, boom, right? And I just started dancing. And Catherine got up and she took my hand. And she was turning and spinning and just being in this delicious divine energy. In that moment, she was open to what was being offered to her. How many times does that happen in your life? And you are so focused on what is what? Fixed in your life. Because that's the only way you've known it. It's okay, but just know that that's the only way you've known it. And you can change it. And yes, I know about the fear. Yes, I know about, oh my God, what might happen. But what about the what if? What about that one? All of these amazing, awesome things that would happen. What happens when there's an earthquake? What, what, what has gone on before that happens? Shifting, tectonic plates. Even the slightest shift. What happens? Not just in that location. I know I was living in Las Vegas many years ago and, and the waterbed that I was in started moving and the swimming pool outside, I looked out and was doing this and the sand was rippling uh, like in the movie Dune, for those of you who might remember that movie. And there was an earthquake in Los Angeles. And that energy traveled. It rippled. In your own life, when you are willing to shift, ever so slightly. Because tension is built up. Mother Earth is like, oh my goodness, I don't know how much more of this I can hold. There's all this dense energy. So the Earth goes, oh, let me take a breath. Let me shift. And oftentimes, yes, there are things that happen that are not great, that people end up having really painful experiences because of what happens with an earthquake. But what I want you to do is to shift, like we talked about earlier, from a victim standpoint into a victor standpoint to be able to say, hey, there is always something good happening. In the dark, there is also the light, the contrast, to be able to say, when things are being unearthed in my life, there's a crack, there's an opening, there's a shift, and something is going to be revealed to me to the degree that I am willing to look through a lens of clarity. I am going to know it. And with that, my life is transformed. That is a holy shift. I'd like, there's a post that I had on Facebook. Oh, Asha, yes, please. Because I also wanted you to know. <laughs> so what do you think? What do you feel when you see that? Imagine that. Because we go, when, when life turns us upside down, we go, holy sh don't we? We go, oh my God. We have all these things we say. Imagine when life turned you upside down and you could, as a shaman, and with shaman wisdom, the turtle, I thought this was so perfect because what turtle represents is new opportunities. It represents so many things. I'm going to read a little bit to you in just a moment. But to be able to say, oh my God, my life it's been turning upside down, just like you talked about being stagnant earlier. Somebody spoke about that. Okay, it may feel like scary and uncertain, and usually we're like on a bug on its back trying to find our way to up to ride ourselves back to that place. But in this place, it's like, wow, I'm open to seeing the sky. I'm open to knowing that I believe I can fly. I'm able to do things that when I'm walking around like this and I'm only focused on what is right here, I can't see or know anything different. 
optimism. It's the best way to see life. Give it a try. Become the turtle. In shaman teachings, we always have guides. We have angels. We have all kinds of wonderful beings to carry us on this journey. Turtle indicates a more primal sense that is awakening, physically and spiritually. Turtle reminds us to take advantage of opportunities, listen to this last word, that we perceive. Perception. Perspective. These are real opportunities, not just products of our imagination. When we are willing to shift and truly open ourselves up to what is being offered, the possibilities are endless. To me, a moment of a holy shift is like a portal. It's like a black hole. And it opens us up to being able to travel into a dimension, into a place that otherwise we could not access. Because our humanness, our ego, our habits will block us from that. When turtle appears, we are reminded it is time to get connected to our primal senses, to all that we are. We have gone within our shell, and now we must come out. The ideas are ready to be expressed. Turtle promises that if we express and act, and act upon those ideas and perceptions, we will succeed. Turtle tells us to trust. That, to me, is another ingredient in the holy shift. Breathe. Surrender. Trust. Turtle tells us to trust that vibrations are good for making changes now. The other thing, too, that turtle reminds us of is the turtle carries the world upon its back. It reminds us that if we trust Mother Earth, we will have all we need. There is no lack in this place. That is the truth of who and what we are. That's pretty awesome, I think. And we deny ourselves that for all the reasons that we do. Because of the beliefs. Because of the stuff. The stories that we've been talking about. It's time to put your name, perhaps on this wall or somewhere in your home, and state it and say, author of my new life. I am writing my new story. Mother Earth will care for us bless us, protect us, and nurture us. For that to happen, we must slow down and tune in to our senses, to that awareness. I call it mindfulness. To me, that's another tool in a holy shift. Because as I begin to focus my energy, and we already know where thought goes, energy flows. So when I do that, perhaps a physical condition that is happening in my body begins to shift with me because I am no longer body. What have I done? Remember what I said earlier. I have tapped into this flow of the divine to a place of remembering there is only vitality in wholeness. That's all there is. There is only wisdom. There is only joy. All the things we sang about earlier. Joy, love, and peace. All of those things. It's opening yourself up to access it. To allow it. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza, this wonderful book. Uh, in fact, some of the classes Cheryl and I taught last year, and I know it's just one that I so love called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And in that book, he has such valuable information. To become greater, we must think greater, but we also must allow ourselves to be open to a new way of being. And that requires us to do many things, actually. But the first one, again, as I'm going to say, is just breathe. There are tools 
that can help you be transformed. I've already mentioned something, some of them this morning with mindfulness. Meditation. There are so many different ways. What we're doing right now, co-creating this experience this morning, that is also another way of allowing yourself to feel loved and supported, connected in community. That in itself, to me anyway, is another ingredient in that shift. Absolutely. Very, very powerful. Yeah, shift happens. But when it does, we disappear. That's what we do. We disappear because what? We're not this body. We actually transcend. That's perfect. That was so perfect. We do. We disappear and we no longer see ourselves in that way. Thank you, Asha. We tied that perfectly. But we do. It is truly a transcendent moment. And we are like, wow. We are no body, no thing. We truly are just this pure vibration and essence. And in that moment, we are one. And we know it. We are already one, but we really know it. We connect with it. I think that is just, I get so excited. Cheryl knows me really well. I could be up here just dancing around and saying, holy shift, holy shift. Did you see that? So next time something happens, that might be your mantra. Holy shift. What is, what is being offered to me in this moment? What am I being called to see? There's a new book written by Dr. Norman Deutsch. And actually, I get newsletters and emails from Joe Dispenza, the gentleman I just mentioned. Also, he's written another wonderful book called The Art of Placebo, which is very powerful. But in this new book, The Brain That Changes Itself, how many of you are familiar with neuroplasticity? The brain is a plastic living organ that can actually change its own structure and function, even into old age. Do you remember the beautiful story, the reading that I brought this morning that Cheryl didn't know about and it got tossed away? Did you hear that? I could feel the energy and emotion of people listening to that story. Into old age, that's just a number that you can appreciate the cracks and the things because of a well-worn journey. They brought you to that place and you always have a purpose, even when you don't believe you do. You have a purpose and it is so precious and divine. And when you connect with that, it's like, wow, your brain, then let's go of those old stories. And those grooves get smoothed out and new ones begin to be created. You begin to plow, if you will, new furrows. There, there's, there's faith in those, in those furrows. There's freedom. It's stuck on the F word here again. There's that letter F. There's all kinds of things in there, right? Arguably the most important breakthrough in neuroscience since scientists first sketched out the brain's basic anatomy, the revolutionary discovery called neuroplasticity has now overthrown the centuries-old notion that the brain is fixed and unchanging. The brain is not as was previously thought, like a machine or hardwired like a computer. Neuroplasticity not only gives hope to those with mental limitations or what was thought to be incurable brain damage, but expands our understanding of the healthy brain and the resilience of human nature. Resilience. To go through what you go through and have life turn you upside down. And then to be able to breathe and surrender and be present in the now, and flow, and go, holy shift, it's happening. This is what I came here for. Wow. Breaking old habits. Shift, open to a new perspective. Put your thoughts and your attention in a new direction. I wanted to close with a story. Oh, actually, it's a autobiography, a short version. Some of you, I'm sure, have heard this already. <coughs> Melody's shaking her head. Perhaps she already knows this. She's like, <laughs> this is by Portia Nelson. There's a hole in my sidewalk. It's the romance of self-discovery. Chapter one of my life. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. 
I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It still takes forever to find a way out. Holy shit. Right? Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. Holy. Right? But it isn't my fault. How could it be? And it still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. <laughs> it's a habit. It's a habit. Remember I said that word earlier? Breaking the habit of being yourself. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. Yeah, because I've been here before, right? It is my fault. I get out immediately. What's starting to happen? There's a bit of a shift. Right? Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Yes. <laughs> Chapter 5. Holy shift. I walk down a different street. <laughs> Yay! I did it! No matter what. Become a turtle. Let it guide you. When you're on your back, go, oh my God, I can fly. Surrender. Breathe. Walk down another street. Holy 